Bill Manning here from Northwest LLS. I'm with uh, Craig Birchall here. He's down at a trial site on the Liverpool Plains looking at uh, subsoil constraints and what can be done about them. Just tell us a little bit what sort of subsoil constraints we have down here and uh, what sort of effect they have on crops. Um, subsoil constraints or soil constraints are anything that's reducing crop yield f compared to what we could be potentially growing. So it, it includes things like soil sedicity, which is really common across a lot of Australia. And that, that's where the soil um, disperses when it gets wet. So it, it becomes very plasticine and like and hard to manage. When it dry, which it becomes very hard. Um, and the result of that is that water can't get in and and plants can't get, uh, can't extract the water when they're trying to. Um, so that's just one. The other things, other constraints are things like compaction, whether that's naturally occurring or um, has been put there by tractors, um, soil acidity, soil alkalinity, and even things like salinity. Okay, and down here on the Liverpool Plains, we're looking mostly at salinity and sedicity, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So we've got soils here that are very sodic, so 5% uh, to 10% ESP, exchangeable sodium percentage at the surface, but it's a subsoil where we're, we've got some real problems. So some of these soils are sort of 20 to 30% exchangeable sodium percentage, or even up to 50%. Um, the interesting part is that in soils where there's no salinity, that could be really problematic. In these soils, there's enough salt that it stops the soil dispersing, um, which means that it be behaves much better. The downside to that is that the salinity itself can be a problem and a, a constraint on crop yields. And perhaps just give us a couple of treatments here you're looking at that you hope might, uh, might help combat these problems. Okay, so our treatments, um, we're looking at deep ripping as an option, and if you've got compacted soils, that's obviously one, one option that you're looking at. Um, but the others are things like gypsum, which has traditionally been used for sodic soils. Um, organic matter, which improves soil structure, which is one of the big issues with, with sodic soils and soils in general. And one of the more experimental options we're looking at is using elemental sulfur. So as it breaks down and oxidizes in the soil, it releases sulfuric acid, which um, reacts with the, the lime that's present. So we're reducing pH and producing gypsum at the same time. And what sort of data are you gonna collect from these treatments this year? So we've been looking at how much water is available in the soil. So we put the treatments in last year. So we've had all of the wet summer to accumulate water. So we've, we've worked out how much we've accumulated. We're looking at how much the crop has used from sowing through till harvest. Uh, we've measured crop biomass to see how well they've grown and obviously we're going to be taking yields at harvest just to see what is actually produced because um, economically that's, that's what's important to the farmers.